Good afternoon. My name is Scott Rudd, the Chief Strategic Officer at T3Live.com. Welcome to today's recap and look ahead. So we, we came in today, the futures are down eight, nine handles. For those of you that are part of Red Oil Access or get my note, my whole thesis was, can we stay below Tuesday's low or even Wednesday's low? Okay, those were the two pivots that we had to trade against. The whole world was gloomy. If you friggin' put on CNBC all day long, all they talked about is how we're going back down below, you know, 2020. Here comes the 200 day. You know, there's there's no buyers to be found. Um, blah blah blah. Okay, <laughs> you know, but you know, on the technical side, you had the oscillator minus 62, which we know minus 40 is oversold. So at minus 62, chances are you're not going to make any money shorting. You know, you missed your opportunity. And not saying it was an easy bounce. The first half an hour or so. Or first hour, things felt very heavy, but then things started to lift. So if you kind of turned the TV set off and, didn't, and drowned it out the noise, you know, from using the technicals, you could have, you know, probably made yourself some good day trading money using the pivots. What were the pivots? You know, in the note, I talked about Tuesday's low, which was the weekly low, and then yesterday's low. If sellers had enough power to keep us below those, you know what? Maybe we could have seen 2020 on the SPX, you know, today or tomorrow. But it didn't happen. We reclaimed all those, and many stocks reclaimed their, you know, their, their prior day lows. So if you were short, that was your spot to cover. And if you're looking for day trading longs, maybe you made some great money, and maybe even have a third overnight, because that's kind of what the, you know, the, the red dog reversal strategy tells you to do. So if you look here at the chart, let's go to the SPX. Here you go. Here's your visual. This was Tuesday's low, right here. Boom. So Tuesday's low was 2064. Then if you go like this to your descending channel, okay, um, this one went a little bit below, okay, um, and actually filled the gap that we go with the spiders. So anyway, you know, decent sized travel range from the lows to reclaiming this spot or reclaiming that spot. So that's why sometimes you try verse a 5, 15, or 30 minute low or an hour low. What's, what does that mean? Okay, if you come back to me, Freddie. Um, it means that sometimes when you're a dollar or a dollar and a quarter but below a pivot, you know, it's a little hard to wait for the first buy to be at the pivot, so you wait for that spike low, right? It could, you could have tried it at the 15 minute low, you could have tried it at the 30 minute low, you could have tried it at the 60 minute low, because sometimes it takes time. You know, you lose a little, lose a little, lose a little, and then when it actually triggers, then you make it back and then hopefully make a lot more than that. And what do you use? You use small descending channels on the 5 and 15, and then you could use some igniting bars, and then you measure the move, and then you could even use your 5-minute Keltner curves, or, or 21, you know, moving average Keltner curves. So let's go back to here. Okay, so this, again, was pivot 1, pivot 2, and this was your low. So let's uh, talk about how it transpired. Let's go to the 5-minute chart. So here on the 5-minute chart, okay, basically, you know, straight down. Here was your low, here was your overthrow low. Okay, here's the overthrow low that took you down to 205.56. I know some of us were trying to be long in, in this spot, which I was also. But here's your overthrow low, and then here was your higher low. Okay, so higher low versus that. So you could have been a buyer here, which was not easy to do, definitely not, you know, versus this low. Okay, and that was um, done at 1035. So here's your 60 minute low. You write that down. Okay, then from here, you know, you broke this little pivot. Okay, here's your lower pivot. So if people were shorting versus it, you had to cover. Then you had your first move up, held the eight day. Next move up was two, the Tuesday low. So what usually happens at a prior pivot? You get a little bit of resistance. So on this resistance, you came in. And then what happened? Held this spot on the five minute, a small little red dog reversal, came up. And then this time when he came to this pivot, it didn't just you know, get rejected like you got here because it didn't come from all the way down there to here. It came from a higher spot. Okay, so this time it pushed through, held up, and then went to the next pivot. Oh, what a quinky dink at this pivot, which happens to be the gap fill in Wednesday's low, saw some resistance, came in, and what did this do? Made another higher low. So now, ooh, look at this. It's developing a trend from the, from the morning. So this one gave you an igniting bar, so maybe you bought it there. Or maybe you bought it here when it crossed this descending channel, pushed through, came back, and then followed the eight day all the way up to the close. So this is the anatomy of the trend off the lows with knowing your daily pivot from Tuesday and here's your daily pivot from Wednesday. Okay, so um, hopefully if you were sitting in front of your computer all day, you had a decent day. And now the question is, can you get some follow through? So, you know, we'll see what happens, 
you know, tomorrow. Here's a clean look at the spiders. Um, I posted the chart of this and the SPX, which you can look at on Twitter. Now the question is, it goes ex-dividend tomorrow, so it's going to be a little weird. But um, now you'll see step one to get some kind of rally resumed, kind of like here. Remember when the world was thinking everything was going to fall apart? You had the potential of this head and shoulders pattern, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Okay, and we could have broken down and gotten crushed, but instead you had a reversal here. And then that was step one. You had a gap up inside day, and then we took out the right shoulder, which was right here, that got you away from you know, being short, reclaimed the 821 day, and then from here you went from 205 to 212. Now we'll see what happens in this spot or not. Do we get a little bit of an inside action holding above it and then, you know, get uh, a re reclaim this spot or do we not? So anyway, that's, that's part of the thought process. You go to the Qs. Um, it too, you know, had a reversal, okay? Um, if you go to my note, you'll see the two spots I wrote down was Tuesday's low, which was 107.24, and Wednesday's low, 107.54. You closed at 108.04. If you bought here, and put a stop at the low of the day, you made money, you could have sold it on the close or held some, or if you bought here, you would have made a little less, but you also would have been up 55 cents and then you could take a third or not. So again, this strategy worked here differently, okay, different day in the life of a trader. It's still showing relative weakness, it still didn't take out the 2016 highs, it's still below this pivot, but for a day trade, it made some sense, if that's what you do. So <clears throat> within that, you know, high beta tech did not act special, okay? Um, Facebook looked like it was going to break below 113.30 and gave you a fake out and then closed okay. Um, not the, the best place to be focusing, okay? So here, did it seem like it can get below this pivot and stay below it? Yes. Did it not? No. Okay, it came back above it. So now, you know, just a day in the life of trading. You could have made a little bit of money short it the first time it went through and then made more money buying it when it reclaimed it later in the day. Still you know, has a slower pivot, not showing anything too special. Amazon was upgraded twice. First part of the day, you know, it, it went below uh, this pivot here, which was your 711. You know, so some guys made money short. And then, you know, when the market finally decided to rally and there were some buyers around, they reclaimed it. So does it look a little better? Yes. Did you, you know, if you would have bought it when it got back above this, um, you know, and reclaimed the 21 day, then all of a sudden, boom, you're in the money $6. And now we'll see whether or not you know, something could show some leadership in the next few sessions or not. Um, but all in all, you know, you know, morning short to better long in the afternoon. And it all depends on how you want to skin the cat. Um, Netflix tried, okay, tried, what's that word? Tried to, to break this spot and there was no follow through. I tried shorting it today too when it looked as if this bear flag would continue to the downside, but it didn't. So, you know, now we'll see whether or not this, this, pivot here from a higher level. Remember this pivot that went to there? It's a higher level. You'll see whether or not there's any kind of force or velocity, you know, moving forward. It did hold in there a little bit. It tried to be strong in the morning and then got weaker and then, you know, market came in there and it, and shorts got squeezed. So now you'll see whether or not this continues. Not special, but there it is. You know, I talked about mega cap tech. You know, could Apple get below and stay below 96.50? It went below it or 96.63. Was a decent short for some, or it was an avoid, and then later in the day when the market rallied, it reclaimed it. Some of you guys got long, and you know now Apple looks a little different. You know, complexion changes throughout the course of the day. Okay, yesterday it looked a little wishy-washy that it can get through here, and you know what it did. Okay, for half a day, and then it reclaimed it. If it closed below and stayed below, maybe it would have been a little weaker, but it didn't. And now you're still in this descending channel, and then maybe if the market actually wants to be decent. This is something that's a candidate to continue to the upside. But as of today, if you used your 96.63 pivot and you were short, once it got back above it, you covered and you saved yourself 90 cents. If you bought it when it went above it and put a stop in at the low, you know, you had a good trade. And if you're in some still, maybe you get even a better trade if it continues tomorrow. But continuation has been something that hasn't been, you know, the easiest to do either. But again, using the pivots and using some sediment definitely could do okay. You know, look at gold and look at the miners. This morning they were at highs, looking like they could do no wrong. So what was the strategy in the morning call? Gold looks great. Opening above highs, make sure it holds above highs. Why does it you have to make sure? Because if you're playing something for momentum to break out, you better make sure it holds a breakout level. And in my head, what was the GLD breakout level? A 124 or 123.98, and I think it was a 125. Look what the GLD did. 
You could have been long it overnight from yesterday. Made sense, right? Engulfed it, closed. You know, if you were playing for it to break out, which it looked like it could, it was up a buck and change. You know, that's why I always, I wasn't long this overnight, but my thesis usually when I'm in overnight, I sell half usually into the overnight move to book some, and then if it goes negative, I get out. Here, if it went back below 124, that was a strategy to get out. And look what happened, boom. You could have sold some, and then you could have got out here, and you didn't stay in for this noise. Look at the size of this bar. Okay, that's a pretty ugly bar. Now we'll see what's next. But it was also extended from the 8 day, the 21 day, the 50 day. It rallied all the way from the, the bottom end of the range, so you know, kind of hard to sustain it. Does it mean the, the move is over? It doesn't, but it does it. <laughs> if you didn't sell anything and you held through it, you're probably a little worried. If you got short, I think some guys got short on the open, thinking it would get a little bit of a fade, and then maybe said, oh, look at that. It couldn't hold the prior breakout. Let me add more. You know, boom, you made good money. Um, was this too big of a range to hold short overnight? I don't know. You know, if you were short and you have great prices, maybe you, you hold the third. GDX did the exact same thing. Okay, here was your level. Okay, it, it looked good you know, yesterday, okay, right? It held the eight day, uh, dovish fed, get long overnight. Well, it's your pivot. This is your pivot, the prior highs here. If you want to play for momentum and play for continuation, what does it have to do? It has to hold above a prior high. What did it do? It opened above it and failed, okay? You should not be long this overnight. If you want to be shorted, that's a whole different story. You know, I would say good book says to be short, but you had a big travel range here. So, you know, at this point, at least don't be long, just in case this engulfing reversal leads to a down move, especially since you saw some positive action in the equities. So each day, you know, if you use bar by bar analysis, whether it's on the daily, whether it's on the 5, the 15, 30, 60, it could help you make, you know, changes in your, you know, your intraday movement so you can make cash flow and maybe even put on swing trades that can last for more than an hour a day. Maybe it goes a few days, depending. You know, I think a lot of people were confused about the news about, um, you know, I, I actually missed it. I was out in midday when someone was assassinated or shot, you know, from Parliament, and then they said maybe the Brexit vote was going to be delayed, and I don't know if that was a catalyst. That's what the news is trying to say. The catalyst was is a, a delay in the Brexit. Who knows? Maybe it's because of option expiration tomorrow or that the oscillator was minus 62, but everyone always has to create a narrative around uh, a news story. But, you know, either way, that's a horrible news story. I'm sorry to that lady's family. That's horrendous. You know, we're seeing way too much of that. Um, I don't know the full story, but someone died for no reason. You know, it just, it sucks. <laughs> um, anyway, let's just move past that. And then you had oil. Oil was a head scratcher. You know, why would the market rally with oil lower, closing on the lows? I, you know, I don't know. There's always something that makes it hard to believe in the action. Yesterday was the VIX that was, you know, so weak. That's why we thought we would rally yesterday, and we didn't, and then we didn't, you know. Here, you know, it's right on this trend, okay? I would say... This is probably a better buy than sell, okay? This is when Dennis came out, Mr. G-Man, you know, and said oil's going to 60 when it was at 51, and now yesterday or today he said, I'm shorted, <laughs> so it'll probably rally. Same way when we were down here, he said in his lifetime it'll never see 44, and then he gets bullish here. I, you know, that's why you can't listen to the media and the talking heads because you have no idea what they're truly doing and no one knows anything more than you, especially if you've been watching this report every single day. Here's when the accelerated trend broke, and now we'll see whether this more, you know, gradual trend holds. So in closing, you know, each day the action changes. Um, I think, you know, which even for me, the best thing to do is when just say the, the oscillators are plus 40, yes, you could stay overbought for a more period of time. You never have too many longs on, especially if volumes light and some things look faulty because you know, it could be a leg sweep because usually from when you go from plus 40 to plus 50, you always make your way back to zero at some point if you can handle it. Same way when you're like minus 40. That's why this morning I tweeted when we're minus 62. I'm like, indices still feel heavy, but this is not a spot to, to press shorts. Okay, and that was when I think the spiders were below uh, 206. Obviously, I didn't say buy the hell out of them. I just said don't freaking press shorts. The risk reward's not there. And then as the trade changed and you you know, and you saw those igniting bars and you saw some commitment to it and you saw some pivots get reclaimed, okay, then all of a sudden your trade could have changed from not shorting to testing some longs and making some cash flow and maybe still having some. And, you know, as long as you know how the thought process should develop in your head, you know, you could probably consistently do this every day, you know, and make a living and have your months add up and have a career and, you know, continue to follow the good book because the good book, using technical analysis with a little bit of, um, 
you know, fundamental reasoning in your head and common sense and a process and discipline and you put it together, you know, it, it can be done. So hopefully you're doing it. And um, if you didn't have a good day today, you know what? This type of day happens many times. And um, maybe write down in your little book, you know, what you were thinking and who maybe threw you off or what threw you off or, you know, or, or, or what you could do better. And next time you see this again, you know, you'll do better the next time. So all you could do is improve on what you did wrong and build on what you did well and, and keep learning and evolving and, and, and make this into a, a long-lasting business and career and, and also different time frames. You know, this is the time period that will help your 401k. It'll help your 529. It'll help your 10, 15, 20, 30-year time horizon. You know, two-year, three-year ranges help your average cost for when we go up again. And historically, the bull market wins. Over the last 100 years, the bull market has won. If you invested you know, your first dollar the day before the 87 crash and you kept doing it every single month thereafter, you did just fine. I think my wife started her 401k a year or two years before the financial crisis. You know what? She didn't stop not putting in money throughout the financial crisis. It helped her average cost. And then all of a sudden, boom, we're at new highs. And those type of scenarios help your average cost. Even when the Mayans said the world would end, it didn't. Okay? You have to know your time frame. You know, obviously, if you were a trader and you were buying <laughs> early and you bought when we broke the 8-day and you bought when we broke the 21-day and you bought when we broke the 50-day and you puked it out when we broke the 200-day, chances are you might not have been able to stay solvent and you couldn't create cash flow to pay your bills, but that's a different type of trading versus longer-term time horizon. So you've got to figure out where you want to live, figure out how you want to go about your business and you know, develop a consistent routine and plan and process in order to keep yourself sane uh, to stick with it. And um, hopefully you could do it on all time frames and that takes a lot of time, a lot of work and you know, a lot of experience. You know, so start at one place at a time and know what you're looking to do and, and work hard to get there. Have a great night and I will be in Short Hills tomorrow.